My name is Anne Gray and I would like to show you an experiment. Um, this Today's experiment is all about a murder note. We're trying to solve a murder. Um, children love that sort of thing but we make a story behind it. The story shows this note was found on a dead body. It must have got wet when it was lying beside the body. Written on it are Give back the money you owe me or I will kill you. But the or I will kill you has got smudgy with the wet. Now, the pen that wrote it was black. The three suspects to this crime all have black pens. This suspect is called Yong Tong. That's a photo fit picture of him. And this is the pen that was found in Yong Tong's pocket. Next suspect is Prue Free. She had this pen in her handbag. All black pens. And the last suspect was Jason Smelly. They're all linked to the dead body. But we can go into that in another time when we're looking at other clues. This is the pen that Jason had in his pocket. Now we've got to find out which of those pens wrote that note. And to you do this, we're using the science of chromatography. Let me show you how. First of all, we take a Petri dish with a slit in the, in the lid. We put three measures, one, two, three, three measures of water into the first Petri dish. We take a strip of chromatography paper Take Jay's Yong Tong's pen and put two fingers at the base of the pen. Measurement is very important in science and you want to, to measure everything. Two fingers from the base, we put a big inky dot from Jason, from Yong Tong's pen. Give it back to Yong Tong. Put the paper strip in the water inside the Petri dish and just leave it. You don't push the dot, dot underneath, you just let the water climb up the paper. Now we're going to repeat this experiment with proof phrase pane. Yet again we put one, two, three squirts of water into the Petri dish. Take another strip of chromatography paper and proof phrase pane. Two fingers from the bottom, same two fingers, we put a dot from Prue Frey's pen. And again, we slip it into the water. The water slowly climbs up the paper and it goes through the dot. The last one we do is Jason Smelly's pen. Very same way, one, two, three squirts of water, lay that aside now. And the last strip of paper gets Jason Smelly's pen. Two fingers from the bottom, big inky dot, put the lid on, give it back to Jason Smelly, and put this one in the water too. I've done it in two papers, we only need one. Put that in the water. Now it takes a little while for the water to climb up through the, the, the ink. So let me explain what's happening. Notice that the, the papers are bending over as the water climbs up. The water climbs up through the black ink. Now all black inks are made of a mixture of pigments. Some pigments are water soluble and some of the pigments are not water soluble. If you get a permanent marker, permanent black ink, it doesn't move with water. That's why it's permanent ink. It would move with alcohol, but not with water. And we're using water. So we leave the ink to divide the pigments, to move them up. And it's dividing them in how soluble they are. The less soluble and the insoluble stay at the bottom where we put the dot. That's why we measure two fingers. The more soluble travel right up with the water and divide it, just as it was divided in the note. The blue from the pigment of the, the murder pane was only slightly soluble. It didn't move to the top. The red was a little bit more soluble 
and the green was almost completely soluble. The black, some of the black hasn't se separated yet. Now, we'll leave that to do and we'll do a little experiment on solubility. We want something that's completely soluble to taste. And I think icing sugar is a good, good thing to taste. So we take some icing sugar and a bowl of water and put a spoonful in the bowl. Give it a stir. That is the soluble icing sugar. It should all vanish. The slightly soluble is table salt. So we put a spoonful of that into this bowl and give it a stir. Let it settle for a little while. That's that spoon, that spoon. And the last one is insoluble. That's sand. It's not soluble at all. I don't think. Otherwise there would be no beaches in the world. So we'll try some sand. Give it a stir. Now, let's have a look. If you notice, the sand hasn't dissolved at all. It's completely insoluble. The salt has partially dissolved. There's not a whole spoonful of it left there. There's some slightly soluble and some completely soluble. Whereas when you stir the ice with sugar, it's a bit cloudy, but there's no ice and sugar at the bottom of the dish at all. It's completely dissolved because it was soluble. Now let's find out which pens were soluble, slightly soluble or insoluble. Yong Tong, no, no, first of all, the clearest one. Crew phrase pen. If you notice, the water hasn't moved the dot at all. That pen was very like the sand. All the pigments in that pen were completely insoluble. Could Prue Frey's pen have written that note? Oh, look at this one. This is Yong Tong's pen, two fingers from the bottom. There's no mark at all. There's no blue. It's all moving up. That pen had pigments in it that were completely soluble, like the ice and sugar. Could that pen have written this note? Maybe it does. The last one is Jason Smelly's. If you notice, two fingers from the bottom, there's a blue mark. Further up, there's a red mark and a green mark Italy. That one is a mixture of soluble and insoluble. I wonder whose pen wrote that note. Does our experiment show you? Now we don't know if this criminal did the murder, but we do know his pen wrote the note that was found on the body. Come back in a month and we'll do another experiment and find out if Jason Smelly has more clues that point to him rather than the other two suspects.